Advanced Automated Synchrony, improving pressure support breath delivery with Newport Medical's automatic slope rise and flex cycle. One of the worst mechanisms responsible for breathing discomfort during artificial vent ventilation is the lack of synchronization between the neural inspiratory time of the patient and the mechanical action of the ventilator. After realizing that we have to keep our patients much more awake than before, this problem came back as one of the most important challenges at the bedside. To meet this challenge, Newport Medical has developed the Intelligent Control System, a group of automated functions that are designed to improve total breath synchrony so that your patients can be more comfortable, require less sedation, and are liberated from the ventilator sooner. This presentation illustrates how two ICS features, Newport's Automatic Slope Rise Manager and Flex Cycle, Newport's patented Automatic Expiratory Threshold Manager, work together to provide your patients with unprecedented synchrony during pressure support ventilation. Pressure support was developed to assist patients with spontaneous breathing so that they can build the strength they need to breathe without help from a ventilator but some patients are uncomfortable when ventilated with conventional pressure support due to breath timing dyssynchrony. Newport's ICS improves pressure support breath management, so patient ventilator synchrony and comfort are restored. Pressure support was instituted 20 or 25 years ago, and, and the reason it was introduced it was more, it was the most physiologically normal mode of ventilation that could match up to the patient at the time. Through the course of the years that we've used it, we've come to realize that there are some limitations to the use of pressure support. One being that you, you have to be able to match their inspiratory demand on every breath and also match their cycling time to go to exhalation. New additions to the pressure support are adjustable rise time and adjustable uh, cycling to exhalation, but these can still be a challenge for the clinician to set. The challenge for the clinician <clears throat> when adjusting these parameters is uh, when he adjusts, for instance, the slope rising time, he has to readjust the expiratory threshold. And once he finishes this, he has to come back to slope rising time and readjust again. And it's not all, 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 always obvious in which way he has to adjust it. Let's examine the importance of setting slope rise correctly and discover how the slope rise setting impacts the cycling off timing that results from the expiratory threshold setting. Slope rise. The slope rise setting determines the rate of pressure rise from baseline to target pressure during pressure support breaths. A rapid slope rise with a squared pressure waveform yields a higher peak flow and higher machine assistance for the patient in the initial phase of the breath. This provides the patient with a decreased pressure time product and decreased work of breathing. Setting a slope rise that optimizes flow delivery and minimizes work seems fairly straightforward, but it is complicated by the fact that slope rise and expiratory threshold settings are interdependent. The interdependence between the slope rise and termination criteria is caused by the fact that by adjusting slope rise time you are changing the peak flow of the patient and because of this your termination criteria or the, your threshold for respiration is going to change. Adjusting the slope rise to a faster value in order to provide better support at the beginning of the breath may cause cycling off dyssynchrony at the end of the breath unless the expiratory threshold is readjusted to suit the new slope rise setting. It's important that all slope rise adjustments be followed by careful reevaluation of the expiratory threshold setting.